Greetings, humans. Spinning Mantis here with the next episode of Blues and Bullets, Bubbleheads, and New Choices. Thanks for joining me. We just got through the shooting oh, section. We've got a way out. We've captured Ivankov. And here we go. You drive that thing? I'll have to. Let's go. Not yet. Ivankov mentioned the cargo zone when I tried to get information about the girl. I have to investigate. Do the creepy investigation now. All yours. I'll stand guard. Without a gun? I always carry one. No. I prefer not to use it unless I have to. They could have killed us. But they didn't. You should be proud of yourself. Not mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Look at that first. So, huh, so we know Apollo or two oh nine. Let's check out this horrible place. My God, what is this? Bloody paw prints, made by dogs, most likely. Blood stains trampled by the bare feet of at least four different people. The boots that left these prints were fairly new, to judge by the clean outline of the sole. Right. That's that. Looks like a scoreboard. Some of the competitors have letters and a number, but towards the end there are others that only have a number. So there's the tournament. Hmm. Apollo. Ivankov said he dreamt of becoming a boxer. Did his dreams come true down here? There's more than blood on here. There's chunks of brain. The leather's ripped, torn, by teeth. All right, it's a dead end. Oh, that's just nasty. Based on what I got out of Ivankov and these pieces of evidence, I guess he's a human trafficker. Is there evidence that proves Ivankov was trafficking in humans? The 
marks seem to have been made by teeth, although I can't be sure. Animal fur. I think they tried to clean up urine stains with some kind of powerful cleaning product made with ammonia. Two more clues. Bullet casings. They probably shot at whatever was in the cage. I thought one of them was the number, and it says just a number. Just a number. They invented these less than 20 years ago to make life easier for lumberjacks. I wonder how long it was before the mob was using them for their own ends. This is fresh blood, not more than a day old. Dried blood. Day old. Been there a while. Day old. Marks left by the chainsaw, no doubt. Cross painted by hand in blood. Was it the prisoner's own hand and their own blood? Hmm. Sickening smell, revolting stains. This was a toilet for whoever was locked up here. The diameter of these shackles is pretty conclusive. Wrists or ankles. There's still some water and the food hasn't dried out completely. This cage was occupied recently. I think it says Abdelkader, the owner of the biggest prostitution ring in Santa Esperanza. Three Ks. Holy Christ. To walk out of here. shooting. I did it once. I wasn't good at it. <coughs> again. You're not going to help me? No. No? I'm not a detective. And there's too much blood in this tragedy to put it down. You want blood? I promise you, we've got oceans of it right here. And unlike the blood in your Shakespeare, this is real. Yet another reason.
quite the contrast with the rest of the room. I'd almost say it was cleaner than my shower at home. It's a big shadow. up there. Someone paid an extremely high price. Specific orders. Short, red-haired adolescent. Middle-aged white man. Young Negro girl. Looks like Ivankov was paid for some of them, but some were rejected. Death sentences came out of this thing. Guido Colombo. According to Capone, that's the name Sophia's kidnapper used to pass himself off as her uncle when he took her from the school. 1898. We owe this beautiful work of forgery to the talent of Carlo Baccarini. May he rest in peace. Seat from the most expensive children's clothes store in Santa Esperanza, issued yesterday. It's a pretty expensive bell. Kulikov, the most versatile vodka in the world. No doubt about it. Ivankov likes boxing. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Can't see from the inside of her head. Yikes, we are inside our head. We are inside our head. Can we not get to the thing because of it? Wow, this is cray. Oops. Well, what do you know? What's the key? Bingo. What's his name, Mo?
Really does seem to be it. Let's do a little solving. Humans. Recent traces of food and drink. The cages are labeled with letters or names and numbers. Shackles the right size for wrists and ankles. A bucket that contained excrement. No doubt about it. There were people in these cages. The size of the shackles, the troughs for food and drink, and the buckets for waste prove it. Can I prove that the people held here were sold? The cages are labeled with letters, or names and numbers. According to Ivankov's register, not the labels on the cages could refer to the customers who buy human merchandise from Ivankov. I base this assumption on the register, in which some of the pieces are marked as acceptable and paid for, and others are not. What does he do with the ones that are rejected? The metal table on which bodies were mutilated recently. Cages that likely house dogs. Chewed and stained with blood and body tissue. A scoreboard, like a knockout tournament. With all the pieces that are rejected by his customers, Ivankov organizes fights, probably to the death, between prisoners and between prisoners and dogs. Maybe even between prisoners and his own men. What is the fate of those that lose? A metal table on which bodies were mutilated recently. Human bodies, dismembered and piled up like... It seems clear that those that lose in combat are hacked to pieces. Some of them, while they're still alive. <coughs> I'd say they're then thrown into the water, but there's no proof. Alright. That's all there is to solve for now. So you have a sweet tooth? Yeah. And that's why they called you the Sugar Kid? <sighs> All right. What do you want to know? Mm. Why did you shoot those people? The white guy's friends followed a black guy who accidentally killed him. They're 20 at least. They start insulting him. The black guy takes it. After the insults, the spitting starts. The black guy takes it. The shovel. Black guy takes it. Kick from the back. The black guy takes it. Another and another. Black guy turns and fights back. And the mob, growing by the minute, falls on him. Someone fires a shot in the air. Everyone backs off. That someone is the dead guy's brother. He sticks a gun in the black guy's face. But the black guy's quicker. He grabs the gun, shoots him in the chest. While the crowd runs, the black guy empties the gun, not pausing to take aim. One dead. Four wounded. Thirteen years. Reduced due to temporary insanity. You satisfied? Anything else? Not really satisfied, but... I'm sorry about Billy Johnson. I don't know how it happened. I didn't mean to hit him so hard. Well, I did, but... You catch my drift. First of all, I should have been letting him beat me. The fight was fixed. But I wasn't in the mood, and I took it out on poor Billy. A white boy who probably had no idea was rigged. You satisfied? Anything else? How did you survive on Gore Island? Alphonse. When I arrived, he was still in his prime. And he ruled the roost. He protected me until years later, I had to protect him. There you are. Now you know who I am. So, what's the secret ingredient? The deal was that you would tell me who you are. And I found it out for myself. Oh. You win, my friend. For now. Mm -hmm. So there's that. All right, let's go inside.
The giant container has been used to hold children. Was Sophia Capone held in the container? Alrighty, get to it. Boys underwear, dirty. Doesn't look like the dress Capone said Sophia was wearing. Eh, uh, well, Sophia was wearing a blue dress with flowers that I personally ordered for her from Italy. She was also wearing white ballet shoes with daisies embroidered on them. These prisoners were treated reasonably well, all things considered. Not really. No adult could sleep here. Adults hate teddy bears. What do you have to do to a child before they draw something like that? So I gotta wonder if I'm missing anything. Seat for children's clothes. A girl's shoe identical to the one that Capone said is someone paid a lot of money for a piece of merchandise that could well be Sophia. Children's shampoo. Towels that are still damp. A hefty receipt for children. Mm. The forgeries belonging to Sophia Capone's okay. care. A shoe identical to the one described by Capone and the documents used by the person pretending to be Sophia's uncle make it certain that she was held here. Sophia Capone was here, but did she get out? Someone paid a lot of money for a piece of merch. According to the register, Ivankov was paid for Sophia, which means she was handed over to his customer. Sophia Capone got out of here, but did she get out alive? Children's shampoo. Someone wanted them to look perfectly presentable. A hefty receipt for children's clothes with yesterday's date. Towels that are still damp. The damp towels, the children's shampoo, and the receipt from the children's clothes shop indicate that they washed and dressed the children before taking them away. I strongly doubt that they washed them just to kill them, so there is reason to believe that Sophia Capone is still alive. We're done here. Let's go. Already? I thought I'd have time to finish Act 4. Are you doubting my efficiency as a detective? It <clears throat> depend on the quality of your conclusions. <laughs> Ivan Cobb is a human trafficker. He has various customers who make specific requests. Slavers, imps, God knows what else. Just notice a little, like, blood on the lens. them in these cages, shackling them and feeding them like animals until he's ready to complete the order. When he has enough, or maybe when the designated day comes around, his customer comes here and decides which of his catches are satisfactory and which are not. What does he do with the rejects? For many people this would be a problem, but not for Ivankov. 
Like a true boxing fan, he organizes fights between the failed candidates. Bloody tournaments, possibly to the death. I'm sure his men place bets, and that the whole sick spectacle, like the Roman circus, helps keep morale high. But, as in the circus, it's not just people that fight. There are animals too. In these cages, Ivankov kept dogs. He forces the survivors to fight them, wearing boxing gloves, until the dogs tear them apart. And if anyone survives, Ivankov's own men finish the job. This leads us to the next problem. What does Ivankov do with the bodies? Easy. He cuts them up on this table, one by one. Alive, even, if they had the bad Well, I doubt Ivankov does arena. it himself. And then, Maybe sometimes for fun, know. but that's a lot Maybe of work. he throws them overboard, but that's always risky. Maybe if we interrogate him when he wakes up, he can tell us more. But that's not what really interests us. What really interests us is what's inside, or what was inside, this container. In recent weeks, Ivankov has kidnapped nine children for an anonymous client who pays him a fortune for each one of them. The most expensive item of all has been given the initials SC, our Sophia, as proved by one of her shoes. Yeah, her. sit on it. Dick. Today, or possibly last night, the customer took delivery of the children and paid in full. Before this, Ivankov bought them new clothes and gave them a shower. Why would he do that? Is it to sell them into adoption and wealthy families? I very much doubt it, but I can't figure out another reason. What I do think is that his client doesn't want to leave loose ends. I think he forced him to get rid of the rest of his prisoners. This is why they organized fights yesterday, dismembered the combatants, and even killed all the dogs. Are you joking? No. Oh, man. Oh, let's take this piece of shit to Capone. What? They're old friends. I'm sure Alphonse will be happy to... Out of the question. Uh, you saw what he did uh, to us. You want him to do it again? Want us to lose another witness? Christ, 20 years ago I let a child murderer slip through my fingers. I won't let that happen again. What if the two cases are related? They are. Not gonna persuade you, am I? No. Okay. Bam! That is a good place for us to end this episode. The game will save right here. And we will start in a new scene in the next episode. If you're enjoying this, it makes me super happy. If you like and subscribe, join me for the next episode of Blues and Bullets, Bubbleheads, and New Choices. Episode 2. That is going to be all for now. Spinning Mantis out. Namaste.